Hi everybody, uh, welcome to our Wednesday TNT. Thank you for joining in. Please subscribe if you get the chance. If you want to follow up on uh, what's happening around Thailand. Got a few interesting stories today, but uh, for those people that don't want to know about the air pollution up north, uh, one of you in particular I'll get to a bit later, uh, you probably don't want to hear this story, but uh, we've we do have some very interesting stories today. A Bangkok Post is reporting dangerously thick smog intensifies, expands. And the red-coated levels of PM2.5 dust had increased and expanded from the north into parts of Central Plain in the northeast with the worst levels in Chiang Mai. This was yesterday. And at 9am yesterday, 21 provinces faced uh, red, that seriously harmful levels of uh, PM2.5. Now, the worst levels were measured up at uh, Chiang Mai, Mehong Song, uh, Chiang Rai, Nan, Lampun, Payao, Lampang, Prayer, Utra Dit, Nakon, Panom, etc. You can see them there. So just spreading a lot further than just the north into the northeast as well. And provinces in the lower central plain, the lower northeast and east and the south, had moderate and good air quality. And the southern tourist province of Phuket had the best air quality. Well, yeah, the further south you go, basically this time of the year, the better the air quality is. And uh, as I look out the window today, beautiful bright blue skies, not much uh, air pollution at all. This guy, Kevin Thailand, it might be Kevin Thailand or Kev in Thailand, said stop the complete AQI bullshit about Chiang Mai. Who do you work for slagging off Chiang Mai? You're such a jerk. Now, maybe Kev or Kevin uh, doesn't live up there, but if he did, he would be thinking otherwise because the people up there, and of course the tourists who visit, are suffering a lot with this very, very poor air pollution. Now, we'll just very, very quickly, I know some of you get bored with me referring to it all the time, but let's check the, uh, the IQ Air today. No, oh, and as we can see, Chiang Mai, again, number one in the world as the most air polluted city. As you can see there, uh, pretty much the further you go south, uh, the better the air quality, but up around the north of Thailand and then Laos and Myanmar, extremely bad air quality. Once it gets purple like that, we're well, talking about some pretty serious health ramifications. Let's move on to our next story today. And a quick update uh, from Nation Thailand, Equal Marriage Bill wins 147 Senate votes in the first reading. And the Equal Marriage Bill sailed through the first reading in the Senate, that's Thailand's upper house, uh, with 147 votes in favour, four against and seven abstentions. It's meant to be 250 senators. Where were they? The 158 senators attending also agreed to set up a 27-member committee to study the bill which allows people of all genders to marry legally in Thailand. They're going to come back in seven days. Once the bill passes through the three readings in the Senate, it will obtain royal endorsement before being enacted. And one of the senators says it's time we accepted gender diverse people and found ways of making them part of our society. Several parties want this law to be implemented, but uh, we will consider it based on logic, not public trends. Now to that story that's sort of gone a bit quiet the last few weeks. The Swiss man in Phuket in Cape Yamu who put his knee into the back of a Thai doctor it has been a little bit of a follow-up. And cow.english.com uh, reporting that Thai female doctor kicked by David uh, suffers from PTSD. And David, the nickname of the Swiss man who uh, is alleged to have kicked her, and a month after the incident in which Dr. Tenedo Jandam, also known as Dr. Pai, was kicked by Urs Fair or David, a 45-year-old Swiss national on the stairs of a beach villa in Yamu, Dr. Pai has expressed her concern about the case, which has prompted her to seek psychiatric help. And she said she was worried that the case may not be handled fairly because the authorities have been silent. And she was quite stressed because she was afraid of not getting justice. And Dr. Pai called on state officials involved in the justice system to help her. She said she's fighting the case because she doesn't want this to happen to anyone else. She wants justice. The prosecutor has already filed a Section 391 lawsuit, but she may have to file a Section 295 lawsuit.
What are they? Well, 391 states, whoever commits an act of violence not amounting to bodily or mental harm to the other person shall be punished with imprisonment not exceeding one month. Section 295, uh, the same sort of thing, but is said to commit bodily harm and shall be punished with imprisonment not exceeding two years. And an MP for the Move Forward Party in Phuket said the problem of David kicking the doctor is a social problem that affects society and all ties. He does not want the authorities to treat the assault case as a minor offence. Pay and it's over is not acceptable, he says. He wants the authorities to treat the case fairly and not allow foreigners who behave inappropriately to use their money to influence the outcome of the case. Uh, no one's going to disagree with that. Uh, I think the Move Forward MP is entitled to, to make that uh, statement, except to say that, of course, if it was the other way around, and a Thai and a foreigner, we would, of course, expect the same justice. Now, to our next story, and look, I'll just read it pretty much as it is from the Daily Mail, then uh, I can fill in a few details. One of Britain's most wanted men, 80, is arrested at Heathrow Airport after returning from Thailand following 27 years on the run over child sex attacks. And Richard John Ramsey Burroughs failed to turn up for a trial back in 1997 and he's set to appear at the Chester Crown Court today. This would have been a few days ago. And he'd been charged with two counts of serious sexual assault and 11 counts of indecent assault related to the historical abuse of children alleged to have happened between 1969 and 71. This is according to Cheshire Police. And some were reported to have happened in a children's home in Congleton, Cheshire, while others were alleged to happen in Hartlebury, Worcestershire. I hope I've got that right. And oh, here we are. Last Thursday, he was detained at London's Heathrow Airport, having returned to the UK from Thailand. Here's a photo of the man uh, named as Richard Burroughs. This would have been before uh, he left England, before 1997, when he was meant to appear in court, but absconded to Thailand. And for those people who did know him in Thailand, they knew him as Peter Smith. Uh, we'll get to why in just a moment. And Duncan Burridge from the NCA International Liaison Office in Thailand said, Utilising our international network and working closely with the Cheshire Police colleagues, we've been able to track down a fugitive wanted in connection to extremely serious allegations. And this arrest demonstrates law enforcement's unwavering commitment to hunt down those who await justice in the UK. Well, that part about the international network and the tracking him down, that's just a bit of good PR by the UK police officers. He voluntarily, this man whose name, uh, oh, he called himself Peter Smith in Thailand, went back to uh, the UK voluntarily. Obviously, something would have come up on the uh, immigration system and he was nabbed at Heathrow Airport. Uh, he was very ill at the time. He'd been suffering bad health and he decided um, after consulting friends in Phuket uh, whether he should go back and the decision made uh, was made that he should and he did and uh, well he'll be facing his day in court but he worked in Phuket for maybe 15 or 20 years. Now uh, I ran into him at any event or launch or uh, sort of media release because he was working for a publication most of the time I think called uh, Windows on Phuket as a photographer and a salesperson. And uh, yeah, he would, would, would attend every single one of those functions. Never really sort of found the guy particularly interesting. I'd never really gravitated to him, uh, but he will have his day in court. Now there's a lot more to the story that I've been able to find out in the past 24 hours about some of the things he may or may not have been doing here in Thailand during his stay here. So I'll we'll talk about that in more detail on the Saturday program. But uh, yeah, that story from dailymail.co.uk uh, also reported in The Sun. I'm pretty sure it's going to be making headlines in the uh, local media in the next few days as well. Uh, going to this story and from Kalsod English, the Deputy National Police Chief uh, Surachat Hakpan, yes, also known as Big Joke, has turned himself in at Bangkok's Taupun Police Station last night. And the criminal court issued an arrest warrant after he failed to respond to three summonses for money laundering related to illegal online gambling. 
And that questioning process took over an hour. And when he was departing, Big Joke told the press that everything was now in the legal process. And when asked about the rumour that he denied fingerprinting, he said, I followed normal procedures. He also stated that as long as the court has not given a verdict, he's still considered innocent. So both those two senior police, uh, Surachat Hakpan and the chief commissioner of the Royal Thai Police at Torsak, are uh, now sidelined. Uh, one of them has now presented himself for questioning and I think the allegations will fly and uh, lawyers at 20 paces, a lot more to be seen in that story. Now, the latest in the cannabis situation, the Prime Minister over the weekend gave a, an interview with France 24. And, well, it looks like a few things were said and a few things misinterpreted. Uh, let's try and find out what's going on. Bangkok Post reporting, Cholnan frets at the weed policy. Cholnan is the current public health minister. And he expressed concern that most people do not agree with the Per Thai Party's plan to recriminalise cannabis following a recent media interview by the Prime Minister on the subject. And the interview that Mr Saitar gave to France 24 seemed to suggest that they were going to rein in the use of cannabis, which was decriminalised in 2022. And during the interview, the Premier commented that the legalisation of the plant has had negative impacts on the Thai economy, which many took as an indication he supports the plant being relisted as a narcotic. Well, he didn't say that, but people jumping the gun. As of now, only products containing over 0.2% THC, uh, that's the main psychoactive agent, will be considered illegal. And to relist cannabis as an illicit plant, the Public Health Ministerial announcement needs to be revised and it would involve clearing the deck, which would create far-reaching ripple effects since relevant ministerial regulations have been implemented. And consuming the buds for recreational purposes break the law, the minister said, noting that cannabis shops providing cannabis smoking for pleasure are at risk of operating an illegal business under the current cannabis regulations, although they're protected by Thai traditional medicine law. So this whole are you over the 0.2% THC or under seems to be the sticking point. How the hell are they going to test every single plant? And just a bit more on that from Nation Thailand, the headline there, marijuana in Thailand will be regulated, not banned, according to the public health minister. And he said the government will soon pass a bill that ensures marijuana is used for medical and health purposes only. He added that the bill regulating the use of marijuana for health and medical purposes has been drafted and will be submitted to the cabinet for deliberation soon. Under the new bill, anyone who uses marijuana for purposes other than medical or health reasons will be punished. And the minister added that the new law once enacted would require those who want to grow marijuana for personal use to seek permission first. Well, I think it's pretty clear what's happening and the public health minister just stepping in to clarify anything that may have been misunderstood with that interview with the Thai Prime Minister and France 24 on the weekend. But uh, we'll just have to wait now for that process to go through the cabinet and then through parliament. A time now for our daily foreigners working without permits here in Thailand and the PhuketExpress.com reporting illegal Russian tour guide arrested in Talang. And they arrested a suspect identified as Mr. Andre, he's 42, a Russian national. He was arrested at a pier near the local beach called Pakpra Beach in the Maikau district in Talang and taken to the Tata Chai police station to face charges of being an illegal to a guide as well as being a foreigner doing a protected job. And we go to this one also in the PhuketExpress.com. Two British nationals arrested for illegally working at a nightclub in Krabi and a British man and a British woman were arrested at a nightclub in Ao Nang Krabi after they were found working illegally. And Krabi Immigration told the Phuket Express they inspected a nightclub in the Ao Nang sub-district in Krabi and they found two foreigners were working at the nightclub, uh, a Ms Karen, 37, and a Mr Gareth, 45. Both of them were unable to present legal work permits and they were taken to the Ao Nang police station to face charges of working without permission. So the current purge continues. 
Uh, now, it's going to be very hot for at least the rest of this week in most parts of Thailand, so please be careful, especially if you're outside. Uh, slip, slop, slap, as we say. Put on the hat and the sun cream. Look after yourself. Drink plenty of water. By the way, please subscribe to the channel, and we look forward to seeing you tomorrow.